In this video, I'm on my way to meet Sam at this dispersed camping site. And this is one of my favorite kind of overlanding trips. It's the kind where you include, in addition to driving and camping, other activities. Anything that you're interested in. It could be mountain biking or wildlife photography or overnight backpacking. In this video, you will see that other activities lead to the discovery of a 100-year-old homestead site. This is the second time I've stumbled onto something like this just in the middle of nowhere and it always makes me wonder you know, who the people were that lived there and what their lives were like. The trip began with me heading towards Central Oregon. At that time I really only had one thing on my mind and that was stopping at the Metolius River to do some fly fishing. I was only going to have a couple of hours of time to fly fish but I was looking forward to that special kind of outdoor zen that, at least for me, that I can only get while fly fishing. I finally arrive at the Metolius and start fishing. Not a big one, but it's a nice little trout. Wow, that was a nice one that jumped back there. Beautiful fish. Measured in just at 10 inches, but very nice little fish. Fly fish hunter, if you're watching, I'm going to try and narrate this as well as you, okay? So I'm on a three weight Euro rod. Got to get my line management going here. And I'm hoping for a trout, but it might be a white fish. We'll see. Ah, that is a white fish. I can see, <laughs> I can see that guy five feet underwater and he's a white fish. Yeah, dang. All right, well, that was my uh, attempt at a fly fish hunter narration. I definitely cannot do as well as he can, but let's get this guy in the net. It's a fun catch anyways. There we go. Just a white fish. And now I'm heading out to meet Sam. As I do, you will see the landscape change from that unique quality around the Metolius River to more of a high desert landscape. That plume of smoke you see in the distance is Sam's Tacoma. I'm going to need to catch up with him. Desert racing. Yeah, good campsite. That was awesome. More on there though. We got a we got a situation. Need some. Need some. Yeah, I thought about like a soft topper over like a steel frame because they make those. Because I was worried about like fiberglass canopy breaking, you know? Because they do. They break. They break over time. But then I found these these canopies with the aluminum internal skeleton. I was like, this is perfect. Here I'm just getting the eye camper set up for a good evening's sleep. It was forecasted to be pretty cold that night. We wake up to a beautiful morning and as you can see it really is a spectacular campsite. Unfortunately somebody had left a lot of trash around so we decided to pick it up. Just looking around camp there's a bunch of stuff. Some garbage people have left. We're gonna pick that up. There's some over here. Got a propane can somebody was shooting at. Not sure how long this one's been here, but it still had frozen water in it. 
Sam was out hunting this morning for jackrabbits and looks like he was successful. Two rabbits down, baby. Nicely done. In the shed. Oh, wow. Yeah. All within 10 minutes of each other. Here, hold that. All right, tell me the rabbit story. <sighs> I'm so tired of holding these guys. Man, they're big. They are, man, they're fast. We then go on a hike so I can show Sam the dry rock foundation that I'd found earlier in the morning. I have to say, he's quite the hunter. I thought there was almost no chance he'd actually come back with a jackrabbit. Can you see it? Oh, what the heck? Is that a sunken pit? I came walking up on it wondering what it was. And it's like an old foundation. Oh, that's cool. Like some uh, homestead house. Yeah. It's just this wall. This would be the door over here. I thought somebody had stacked a couple rocks over here when I first saw the wall. I was like, well, what is that? I later learned that about a century ago, it was common for homesteaders to build homes using dry rock foundations like the one in this picture. This next photograph is a picture of an historic homestead from generally the same era. It is only about 10 or 15 miles from the foundation that we found. So it made sense that we found it where we did. These other pictures show dry rock foundations that were used for homes or for root cellars. The last picture here was for a hay barn. Okay, that ends my history lesson. All of that I got from the internet. So here again is the foundation that we found. Pretty cool find, and I'm sure there's more in the area. And as I said, it really was an amazing thing to just stumble onto. After that, I headed back to the Forerunner to begin the trip home. It was a fun overlanding trip with some of those other activities that we talked about at the beginning of the video. In our case, those activities were fly fishing, jackrabbit hunting, and discovering a 100-year-old homestead foundation. It's all good fun, guys. Thanks for watching.